Hello, my name is Victoria Belim and I would like to present my book The Rooster House. This book is above all about family, family ties that persist, conflicts and turmoils. And it's also about Ukraine's relationship to its past, specifically to its Soviet past, and the fears that accompany that relationship. Those fears are embodied by something that's called the Rooster House. And the Rooster House is the former headquarters of KGB, situated in the town of Poltava, my family's uh, native town, and that's a town located in central Ukraine. And uh, the building is one of the most beautiful buildings in Poltava. It's really quite splendid. It was constructed at the turn of the 20th century to house a bank, but it was appropriated by the security police. My great-grandmother Asia preferred to take a long route to avoid this place because there was so much fear, so much terror associated with it. It was the place where many people lost their lives and where many people disappeared. And that's where my great-grand-uncle Nicodem disappeared in the 1930s. I discovered it completely by chance. It was in 2014 when uh, Crimea was annexed by Russia, when there was so much uh, tragedy and so much misunderstanding within my family as well, because different people in my family held different points of view on the conflict between Ukraine and Russia and different positions. And then suddenly I discovered that we had someone in the family who, um, who disappeared uh, fighting for free Ukraine. It was just a single line in my great-grandfather's diary that mentioned this person, Nikodim. But in the context of the fight for free Ukraine, for Ukrainian future in 2014, uh, that line, that single line was a catalyst that precipitated a whole journey, a whole odyssey. I returned to Ukraine to spend time with my grandmother Valentina in my search for my great-grand-uncle uh, came across resistance in my family because of the fears of the Soviet epoch. My grandmother Valentina absolutely refused to help me and I was left adrift. I did not know what to do. I did not know why she was so afraid of the Soviet past, the Soviet past that seemed to me like it was gone. Uh, and uh, I was left uh, to my own devices, whether to drop the whole thing or to pursue my search. And um, that's really what the story is about, my, uh, my dilemmas and my journeys, my peregrinations. The story is also about women, and women in Ukraine often are the holders of memory, the keepers of memory, they preserve the stories. Ukrainian culture, Ukraine, Ukraine in general, Ukrainian history have been uh, very tragic and especially the 20th century has been brutal. But Ukrainian culture survived in part because of this uh, Ukrainian mission to preserve stories. I feel that every Ukrainian is a storyteller in part and every one of us hold seeds of these stories and I too felt that it was my mission to preserve as much as I could. And uh, in connecting with the women, in remembering the women in my family, I was able to recreate the stories, to bring them back to life, to hear the voices that we thought were long forgotten. I hope that my book will resonate with the readers wanting to know more about Ukraine, wanting to understand what is happening in Ukraine right now. Because even though the book was finished before this war started, there are echoes of uh, this conflict already uh, visible in it. And I hope that uh, you will enjoy my book and uh, you will understand more about Ukraine and its identity. Thank you very much.